It's finally time for the every position in the Tower of God explained by Mr. Any News. Let's get it. One of the things that makes Tower of God such an enjoyable story are all the details that go into building this complex world. As I'm sure you've noticed, there's so many unique concepts mm -hmm. that are continuously being introduced. Uh, divine what? Don't know that. Suspendium. Uh, that was the hovering material, I think. Irregular, we know that. Inven invent inventories is. It's not just gear. Shinsu, we know that, yeah. Some of which don't even make Ranker. it to the anime. But there Divine Fish? Divine Fish? Invent I thought inventory is just like your gear, your desert bag. Suspendium is the whatever is responsible for floating, right? The anime. But there's a few in particular that stand above the rest as ones of recurring importance. Of course, Shinsu is one of them. Yeah. But another is the concept of the positions. Yeah. The roles that any individual would take on RPG while participating style. in a battle. While the anime did briefly mention these positions and their basic purpose, there's definitely a lot more intricacies to each that are worth being explored. Especially if you're planning to read on into the webtoon and want to understand what's going on in the battles. Can't do that. Then I get spoiled and I can't do anime reactions. So let's go through each of the basic positions and discuss how exactly they work. But first, no ad break this time because this is old Danny news. But first, this video is sponsored. Fuck! I had, I, I, I was right. I had it. I shouldn't have guessed myself. I even had the the intro segue word too. Ugh. I thought he was the other ones didn't have it anyway. Go. In order to understand the positions, we first need to understand why they're necessary. You see, climbing the tower is usually a team effort. More times than not, battles within the tower are fought between teams. Whether it be during a test or even just a personal dispute, unless you're extremely powerful, you're going to want to take lines. on these events with some allies. It's the most standard method of climbing the tower, and each member of a team is assigned a specific position. Yep. Even the names itself originated when King Jihad first climbed the tower with his own team. King Jihad basically made this then? It's also so interesting how, like, all the names are, like, water, ocean, fishing related, right? Even, like, Shinsu is just all, like, water. Like, this mana concept in this show. And then even, like, the frontliners of fishermen, right? Light bearer, lighthouse, you know, wave controller, you know, the fucking waves of water in the ocean, spear bearer. I don't know, you use you, you spears to, like, you know, farm fish or something. So, it's really interesting how SIU created its own unique theme by staying consistent with like ocean fishing and stuff like that. ...originated when King Jihad first climbed the tower with his own team. Though, when they did it- Wait, Team Jihad isn't spoiler? How do you think he climbed the tower? You don't think he had a team with him? We also know he climbed to the top of the tower. Like, this is... not really spoiler. They weren't fighting other people. They were fighting divine fish like the white steel eels. Oh. It's the reason why the positions have That's aquatic a based eel. names like fisherman and wave controller. Though those names may not be entirely relevant now, they're definitely crucial to fighting nonetheless. Sure, the battles may have changed from person versus fish to person versus person, but the way that they're fought are general. The fuck? So when they were initially climbing, it was just person versus fish. But then now they've conquered all the fish and they don't need to. Why is it all fish? I don't know. Who created the tower? I don't know. Someone that loved fish, I guess. Really the same. Now, the first important thing to note is that every position requires the manipulation of Shinsu. In fact, it's how you manipulate Shinsu that determines the position that best fits you. It may seem like only wave Giga controls Chad and Lowry. fishermen have been doing it, but in actuality, every person who has a position has made a contract with the administrator. Can Rachel use Shinsu? She couldn't even see the glowing lights in when they were about to get sucked up above in episode 12, right? Wait, can Rachel use Shinsu right now in season 1? She can't, right? She can't do any- Can she? I actually don't know. I thought that, like, she couldn't. She's just really terrible at it, okay. This allows them to use Shinsu in accordance with the needs of their position. So, with that as a little bit of context, let's start things off with the fishermen. Okay. Considering that people like Endodice- I just know Fisherman as frontliner, warrior, you know, just like up there melee range. Yuri and Anak fall into this category. It only makes sense that these are your standard DPS. Mm -hmm. Fishermen are the core combatants of every team. They excel at close to mid-range combat and as such will always be found at the front line during a battle. 
wonder what position Urek Mazino is, or like Enryu, or Phantominium. Don't spoil me, but like, those other irregulars. Wonder. In comparison to something like a wave controller. Probably all wave controllers. I feel like wave control is just like the best role, man. I don't know, like... Let's think about this concept of fishermen being frontliner DPS. Alright? Let's think about that. Okay? What do they do? Well, they're in the front lines attacking. And what do wave controllers do? Well, they, you know, use Shinsu from a ranged attack and attack. But if you look at Season 2 Bomb, he is in close quarters doing martial arts with Shinsu imbued fists. Is he not basically doing the job of a fisherman as well right now? Right? So just be a Shinsu wave controller. And then you can just fucking do everything. Well, not spear bearer maybe, or like... Oh, who needs to be a spear bearer when you can shoot a fucking beam of Shinsu beams like Lowry can? or light bearer, this is a much less technical position. The only job a fisherman has is to eliminate their opponent with as much destructive power as possible. So at close range they'll choose to use something like a needle, whereas an ignition weapon like this sword is much less common because of its high surface area. Any weapon with- Right, remember, since Rishinsu resistance swords are inherently at a disadvantage in the tower because you know, more surface area, that's why needles are better. But a broad surface becomes much harder to swing in higher densities of Shinsu. Yeah. That's why we only ever see needles or spears used. Makes sense. Though in close quarters combat, one of the most valuable assets a fisherman can use is body strengthening. The technique of manipulating the Shinsu what around them to reinforce their body. It yeah, basically she used Shinsu there to like move faster there, right? Just basically just like armament hockey, just like Shinsu though. It's the first thing a fisherman will learn when being taught Shinsu manipulation. Your ability, now, mid -range, reinforcements. A fisherman would use something more like a reel. It works exactly like how a fishing reel does. That shit got skipped over in the anime, man. The reel and Endorsey's pin, that was never used. Except the line attached to the reel is controlled via Shinsu, allowing it to be wound or unwound at the user's discretion to That's extend right. the Tag viable game as range well. of a needle or hook. During the hide and seek test, it was supposed to be a weapon that both Anuk and Endorsey used against Quant. In this scene here, Anak tied her green April to the end of her reel, then used it to try and touch Quant's tag. Then Endodacy also did something similar, except she actually succeeded in using her reel to steal Quant's badge when he was never distracted. got to see it, man. So it's quite. But like, stealing Quant's badge while distracted in the webtoon versus in the anime where she basically seduced him, right? She she made it look like Quant won, and you know you know she like walked over and leaned her head against his hand, and he was like like got it, and it was like what? It's clear that a reel is just as important as a needle when it comes to a fisherman's inventory. Keep in mind though that inventories are a whole separate concept when talking about weapons. Gear. For now though, all you need to know is that every position has a unique set of tools that helps them to do their job better. Dude, that Shibisu, this Shibisu frame goes so crazy. Dude, he looks so locked in and ready. No more, you know, what's it called? Um, the purple tracksuit either. He got different turf. I can't wait for this Shibisu, man. Usually looking at the type of inventory someone has helps to determine what position they are. For example, the ranker we saw during Serena's flashback was yeah. likely a fisherman because he had both in arms. Now, I wonder how much this matters. Like straight up, sorry, technical difficulties. But like in Serena's flashback, there was this ranker that showed up with a cool design, but like, is this another instance where SIU introduces a concept and just kind of forgets about it and then no one remembers and it's like whatever? ...and an armor inventory, a kit most fitted to a frontline attacker. Next, let's take a look at the position that works closest to the fisherman, the scouts. Okay. Unlike the fisherman who- I would hate to be a scout. Bro, I thought a scout was also all about like getting information and sneaky, but it's like... A scout is actually just a bait. You know, you're the first one in there. You're supposed to get information. I would hate to be a scout. I thought that Shibisu would be light bearer or something, but he's a scout, huh? Who are typically armed to the teeth. Scouts are more the opposite. They're lightly armed with barely anything so that they can swiftly and quietly move ahead to gather information. It's here that you'd find people like Quant, Shibisu, and Huts. As we've seen with Quant, ideally a scout is very quick, mm. both on their feet and in their head. They have to be We talking about the same Quant? Quant's quick-witted? Is he not a brickhead? I don't know Shibisu's quick-witted. Capable of moving extremely fast across long distances, plus be ready to react at a moment's notice. Being fast is only half the battle. Scouts must also be skilled at making split-second decisions. What I mean is that traversing into enemy territory isn't something that they can exactly plan for. 
they must always be ready to encounter the enemy and have a plan for when that happens. Worst role, I would hate to be a scout, bro. Fuck that shit. Nah, bro. Wave controller all the way. Even though the fisherman is the core fighter, the scout will often be the first one to encounter the enemy. Exactly, what you're they bait! What to do after that is completely up to them. Run! And it will often have a significant role in dictating the outcome of the battle. They could retreat, they could continue to gather information, they could flank and coordinate an attack. There's so many options for the scout, which is why their ability to think quickly is such a crucial attribute for them. <laughs> scout is jungler in League of Legends? Eh. Might not be the best comparison, but all the roles in League of Legends, junglers, I mean, all the other roles are just fucking... No, 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 you, you can say mid lane is like, you know, if you go AP mid lane, and you're, you're like a wave controller or some shit, you know? If you're like bot, how do I fucking know that's gonna translate well, but like, jungle, just scout. Go in there, offer support, get out, get information, always run. I hate to be that role, man. Shibisu may not seem like the best fighter. You're just being fucking annoying. Goodbye. But he is very observant and is therefore good at relaying information. This is something that more of a basic scout will do. On the okay. other hand, a combat scout like Huts will focus more on backing up the fishermen. One thing that is common between both types of scouts is that they like darkness. This was briefly hinted at during the hide and seek test the with shadow Quart. scenes? We saw him use a very standard scout Black technique fish. known as Black Fish. It's a body reinforcement technique that uses Shinsu to block out the light of a lighthouse. By doing that, they've essentially removed the enemy's eyes and have made themselves practically invisible. The scouts also possess a device known as an observer that helps to assist with their reconnaissance. What? These are basically portable cameras that oh. collect visual data and pass them on to the light bearer. It's an effective tool to immediately relay information, all of which goes towards achieving the scout's main goal of collecting data on the overall situation. That data is then handled by what's arguably the most important position on a team. The lighthouse. The light bearer. Light bearer. Sounds like it sounds like a scout is just a light bearer's bitch, bro. Like straight up, you go in there, you get all the fucking crucial information so that the light bearer can use that info and use that to coordinate the team. The light bearer to me is like the team, um, maybe not captain, but like manager delegates different roles. You know, the IT network, the central like source of comms, right? Behind every team, there is usually a strategist formulating a plan. Someone who oversees the battle without ever having to step into it themselves. This is because the light bearer uses a device called a lighthouse to gather, monitor, and control information. It allows them to not only have a solid understanding of the situation around them, but also gives them the ability to directly manage it. It's quite possibly the most useful asset to have on the field. That's why it often becomes a prime target for attack. In a way, the lighthouse can serve as a team's lifeline. It's practically their Fuck entire you, command center. So not only is the light bearer responsible for managing information, but they're also expected to defend their lighthouse as well. That's why they can't be useless in combat. If they were, then it'd be like having no defenses on your home base. But also, how many lighthouses can you control? Because you saw uh, Repetelia, that new princess, she was controlling like like, like, couple thousand lighthouses at once. What exactly does this lighthouse do anyway? Well, the device itself is a cube that emits light, gathers information, and transmits commands. It's like a, it's like a computer, it's right? It's made from an ore called Suspendium. Yep, that's a why it hovers. mineral where the higher the purity, the better it floats in Shinsu. It's for this reason that lighthouses are typically graded based on their purity of Suspendium. However, it's not the only device that uses this mineral. The black ball Both thing. Both pockets and inventories use it as well. Okay. That's how everything is able Anything that hovers, the suspendium. ...able to float. Anyway, without getting too much into the logistics of the lighthouse's functionality, one thing actually worth noting is that it runs in units of cubes. The lighthouse itself can be divided into several cubes that can compress or expand into different sizes. Maybe that's what Rapatelli was doing, and I didn't realize that it was a single lighthouse being segmented into separate cubes. So long as one of these cubes is set as the main cube, all the other divisions of it can be set up to do different functions, all of which aid in the gathering of information. One can be set up as a communication hub, while the other is set up as a display monitor and another to record data. Multi-thread processing computers, parallels, like you'd have different threads, different cubes that operates like a different function so you can do everything at the same time. It's quite the versatile asset, which it's is why light bearers and their lighthouses are usually as far back from the front line as possible. 
Well, the ones that focus on creating the strategy are, anyway. There does exist a more frontline-focused Lightbearer who uses their cubes to assist in a more direct way. Hmm? This could be something as simple as generating light via their cubes, or frontline something more hands-on like manipulating Shinsu to amplify the attacks of your fishermen. It could even be both at the same time. Whatever it is, it usually requires an extreme level of Shinsu control due to the sheer amount of multitasking involved. A frontline light bearer not only has to gather information and give out instructions, but also take part in the battle itself. That's kind of hype. Maybe a frontline light bearer is the most optimal light bearer. Instead of someone that's hiding in the back, like if you can do everything a light bearer can and be in the front lines offering other types of support, aren't you like the perfect light bearer? They could even be monitoring and assisting in multiple battles at once. That's why their range of Shinsu control has to be large and their tactics on point. Kun is a perfect example of this because okay. he is both very cunning and strong. The way he's able to quickly take in all information, then formulate a successful strategy, is a sign that he possesses one of the most important qualities of a skilled light bearer. Being strong on top of that is just a plus. The light bearer perfect. is definitely one of the more intricate roles that are. Pro I hate that Rachel's is a light bearer, bro. Rachel should have been like a scout or something, so she can just go die immediately if she goes into bait. Probably the hardest to fulfill properly. You can be a pretty high level ranker and still get outclassed by a single highly skilled light bearer. That's why the light bearer can sometimes become the strongest position on the team. Sometimes, but the strongest position is the wave controller, right? Even surpassing that of the fisherman. Now, the position that's probably the least intricate is the spear bearer. Yeah, well, guess what it does? You have a spear. You, you throw the spear. Done. It's much more simple in terms of responsibilities as they take on more of a long-range support role. As the name implies, the spear bearer supports the fishermen by throwing spears from a distance with pinpoint accuracy. At closer ranges, the Snipers. spear bearer will often be told to aim for the enemy's weak points. But at longer ranges, it's very much the equivalent to sniping. Yep. Their goal is to keep pressure on the enemy team by bombarding them with high damage long-range attacks. That's pretty much what someone like Rack- I feel like a spear bearer is such a- like, Is it a necessary position? Yeah, you're sniping. Can a wave controller not snipe in that distance though? I don't know. Most people probably can't use Shinsu to, you know, be that accurate that far away, right? So that's where spear bearer will be more practical in. I don't know. I feel like spear bearer- Not one of the most exciting classes. You're just kind of just long range throwing a spear. I like Rack, but it's like the spear thrower role. Not the most exciting to me. Rack will do. Finally, we get to the- So far, Scout and Spear Bearer is probably like on the lowest end of what I'm interested in. Fisherman is probably in the middle. Then it's Light Bearer and uh, the Wave Controller. That's on like the top end of what's like most interesting positions. Position of Bomb. The Wave Controller. This is likely the rarest position to be placed into. Even more so than the Light Bearer. What is this thing? Like, do you think that there is something like- I don't know. This is probably super important lore. It, it kind of looks like Bomb when he had long hair as a kid, but then, you know, there's a little booba here. So this is a girl character. Is she supposed to be super important to the tower? Probably. There's probably important lore for whatever this, you know, this drawing of this person is, right, in the past? The thing about weight controllers, though, is that every single one of them fights differently. What classifies them into this position in the first place is their incredible ability to fight with Shinsu. Shinsu. Yes, every position does do this in some way. But this is the best but one. But it's the wave controller that uses Shinsu to its utmost potential. Remember, Shinsu is a substance of infinite possibilities. You can do Therefore, anything. literally anything can be done with it. Yep. So it's likely that every wave controller will come to establish their own unique style of fighting with it. Though when it comes to the overall battle, wave controllers pretty much fight to achieve a single goal, and that's to shift the tides of the battle into your team's favor. Much like. Shift the tides of the battle. Get it? Tides, ocean theme, fishing theme, water, Shinsu. Ha -ha. Like the spear bearer, they'll often be found on the back lines providing some sort of support from a distance. A type of support that involves anything and everything to do with Shinsu. Whether it be manipulating your opponent's flow of it, or using your own to create bang and strengthen allies, the wave this controller the has the role. ability to completely dominate the battlefield. This is the best role. Shinsu is by far the most central component of battle. So, a wave controller who has the ability to manipulate it well will often have the most dominating presence. Imagine someone like Yuga using his abilities to completely deprive your team of Shinsu. Your fishermen are now significantly weaker. 
your lighthouses can no longer float. Your scouts can't hide and your wave controllers can't fight back. It's a very extreme case, but if the power difference is that high, then it's entirely possible. Shinsu is just, just the like core Shinsu, of everything. The wave controller has countless options when it comes to battle. It's just a matter of determining what's best for the situation. That being said, and like in season two now, Bam isn't even like, well, we haven't seen a ranged attack yet, but like, you see how he's just like doing martial arts, imbuing Shinsu in his hands and just fighting hand to hand combat in melee range. So, like, it's really cool to see, like, because like Lowry's probably not gonna fight like that. Lowry's always just gonna be using beams. The most common technique that almost every wave controller will use is called the Bam. It's the very first. This concept still hasn't been explained in season two. Maybe they will later. Maybe Bomb will have like a crazy moment where he, you know, uses like multiple bongs of Shinsu and then they'll like, someone's gonna make a comment like, oh my god, you're using like 23 at once? And then it's like, well, I'm in a minute, what's a bong? And then they'll do like a quick exposition. First thing that they'll learn how to do since it's pretty much a measure of how skilled a wave controller you are. Reason being that creating a single bang requires extreme levels of Shinsu control. So much so that learning how to create just one is said to take over four. Being really over four years to just use one bong. Okay. Do you think what's more impressive? Controlling multiple lighthouses at once or multiple um, bongs at once? Probably multiple bongs, right? Mul multi lighthouse control does look cool, but I doubt it's on the same level as what we're doing with Shinsu bongs here. Four years. So, the fact that Bam only took two weeks to do it himself is a rather phenomenal feat that really goes to highlight his overall potential with Shinsu. Irregular. Of course, there's more to Bang like its size and consistency, both of which go towards determining how strong it is as an attack. But that's more related to Shinsu itself than it is to the actual wave controller position. So, okay. perhaps Shinsu could be a topic for another video. Anyway, that's- And he never made that video. It's pretty much what the wave controller does and can do. It is, however, important to note that just because wave controllers specialize in Shinsu manipulation doesn't mean that they're necessarily the best Shinsu user. As I said earlier, every position can use Shinsu. Yeah. It's just a matter of how that Shinsu is used that determines the position you're placed in. And I thought that the person with the highest amount of Shinsu control would be Shinsu controller, therefore, they, anyways, whatever. For example, Anak and Endodice are currently the best Shinsu users out of the regulars. But that doesn't mean they're Shinsu controllers. But Anak and Endorsi has better control over Shinsu than Bong in season one. Really? I didn't know that. Really? I guess it's just because I've never seen, you know, fucking Anak or Endorsi erupt with that golden Shinsu or other stuff. We just see Bomb and then Laure just pop off. But I guess if you see, it was just not clear enough. They just didn't show it to us. Because I'm like, Laure is probably the most masterful at it, but. Really? That doesn't mean that they'll make for good wave controllers. There are, however, certain cases where a single person can take on multiple positions. There's no rule that says you can't specialize in more than one. Really? So you could be everything in one? You could have your own lighthouses? You could- you, you can have- Is there a character that does everything in one? Is that what Urek Majino is? Maybe that's what King Zahar is. That's funny though. A character that just has multiple roles in one. He's a one-man team. Huts is a good example of someone who could fit both the fisherman and scout role. True. And Shibisu would do fine as a light bearer, light bearer. as well. Light bearer, exactly. So it's not like once your position is determined that you're stuck in that role forever. You can change? I'm sure it also goes without saying that it's very useful for teams to combine the techniques of different positions together. Ooh. Most notably when a light bearer combines their support with a spare bearer or wave controller. But that's getting into some territory that we haven't yet seen in Spear bear with the light. What did you say? Hold up. Techniques of different positions together. Most notably when a light bearer combines their support with a spear bearer or rape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's like light bear illuminating where the position of that uh, target is, and a spear bear able to just like snipe with that dual attack. Yeah, I, I remember that. Controller. But that's getting into some terror. Yeah, th this is crazy right now. What what the fuck is this subtitle, bro? You. Territory <laughs> that we haven't yet seen in the anime. It would mean that we also have to talk about the other positions aside from the basic five. Special positions more tailored to a specific individual and Navigators? their powers. Navigators, Once guides. again though, that'll be a topic for another day.
I don't think he made a topic on that video either. <laughs> anyway, that's everything on the positions and their responsibilities. Yeah. I wouldn't say that any single team comp is better than the other, but I can speculate on what an ideal one would be. Given that teams are most often 8 people or less, my guess would have to be 2 scouts, 2 fishermen, 1 wave controller, 1 spare bearer, and 2 light bearers. Okay. The reason I would have 2 light bearers is so that I could have one focused on strategizing while the other would be a frontline support. 8 spear bearers only. That's what Paracule's team's gonna be. All we need is spears. That's right, 8 spears at once, all going like this. What can defeat that man? That's just my opinion though. Let me know in the comments what team comp that you'd think All would right. be the best. And if you've read the webtoon, then go ahead and- Oh, no, 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 I'm not gonna read the webtoon. But hey, guys, please go give Mr. Annie News a like on his channel, if you haven't already. It's up to his channel if you haven't. I think that- I don't know what composition that I would do, but like, for sure, here's my preference. I've said this before, preference of like, list of, you know, roles. I think that Scout and Spear Bearer is probably in the lower end for me. Maybe Scout last place, then Spear Bearer. Then probably Fisherman, and then Light Bearer, and then Wave Controller, because I'm just a Shinsu simp, and I just feel like the Wave Controller is just like the most OP role. I do really love the theme, like the whole fishing theme that they're, you know, being consistent with the Tower of God. It does make it very useful, like uh, unique, rather than it just being, you know, tank, magician, you know, archer, stuff like that. They, you know, have different, you know, themes around this whole fishing concept, and it's kind of interesting to how... Like in the beginning, how Zahad, when he was clearing it, it was like people versus fish, and now it's people versus people. Anyways, we're getting off topic. That's like random ass different endgame stuff. That's it for me.